Player, an American R&B slash hip hop group formed in 1990 featuring Smoke E, Digital Black and Static Major. Rest in peace, Major. Today's feature is a 90s R&B group that were truly slept on and honestly I can see how that all happened. Their music was never in your face or over the top, instead smooth and easy for the listener to follow. Even their singles, like the R&B classic Chairs to You, was as smooth as ever and really displayed the golden era of soulful R&B, as simple and chivalrous as that song was, which I get because that's kinda what most male R&B songs are about. How much better for her you are than her current situation and how you'd pretty much do anything for the chance to be with her. Nothing women want to hear more but you can't deny that it flows so smooth in any setting and easily sets the mood for an adult night of relaxation and steamy enjoyment. Many have called Player the most underrated R&B group of the 90s and after listening to their music, I can absolutely see why they feel that way. First off, they were a part of one of the dopest upstart conglomerates that too maybe didn't live up to expectations, being under Devante Swing's Swing Mob label when they had a handful of future music legends all working for the attention of Swing but also sharpening each other's swords to be who they eventually became. Artists like Genuine, Missy Elliott, Timbaland and Magoo, associations with Aaliyah and Devante himself all were super talented and hungry while working under one roof creating some of the best contributions to urban music in the 90s. Genuine's hit single Pony is said to be the idea of Static Major. Early on, Playa would write and lend vocals to many of Swing Mob's hit songs until in 1998 they released a hit debut single of their own, the aforementioned Cheers to You. The song peaked inside the Billboard Top 100 at 38 while a top 10 hip hop and R&B song. It led to their debut album of the same name that in hindsight would be their last as well. It wasn't highly anticipated but had enormous potential, one record label reviewing it said, and featured an all-star lineup of Magoo, Aaliyah, Timbaland on production, Missy Elliott and Foxy Brown. It didn't perform quite like expected, peaking at 86 on the Billboard 200 and 19 of US R&B albums but promising nonetheless. Although Chairs to You the single reached gold status, the album didn't and for the most part flew under the radar and eventually became a forgotten R&B gem. Player seemed to have the potential it took to be major players so to speak in R&B but for these reasons that didn't happen. Instead, they vanished from the scene shortly after their debut album. What happened? Let's talk about it. Salute to Kevo Solo Loso for this request. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Player members Jawan Peacock, aka Smokey, Benjamin Bush, aka Black and Steven Garrett aka Static met when they were kids in the late 80s all being from Louisville, Kentucky and sharing a love for music and aspirations of being players in the R&B game. They were first called A Touch of Class but changed their name to Playa for more edge and better fit to their content. In typical Devante swing fashion of attempting to sign all the upcoming R&B talent, as soon as he ran into Playa and heard them harmonize, he offered to sign them as well to his swing mob label and they did, later moving on to Def Jam. Genuine, Missy and Timbaland began to make waves to end the 90s decade with Playa in the shadow helping write some classics for Timbaland, Keith Sweat and Nicole Ray. In 1998 they then dropped their debut album behind three different singles including Chairs to You, their third that finally gave them the much deserved notoriety and start they needed to become stars in the game. Stunt number one, albums being shelved. Nothing hurts an artist more than not being able to release their art to the world. But with the lack of success of their major label debut, the group failed to receive a release date for their sophomore album intently titled Throwback Legends in 2001 and a third album Never Too Later in 2003. 
It's the one drawback of signing to a label and con of allowing your art to be controlled by corporations that only consider the numbers when it's time to meet at the table for talks about further investments. Their job at the end of the day is to create as much profit off money spent on the artist as possible considering the current numbers compared to the label's expectations and an estimation of how the public feels about the artist going forward. Player made some noise with Cheers to You, the single, but for the group as a whole looking at it from a business side, when that single came out, it made Player 1 for 3 in singles, their first outputs I Gotta Know and Don't Stop the Music not making much noise, with Cheers to You coming in and saving the group in securing confidence in their first album. They didn't exactly have the same luck on a second and third and eventually the label lost faith that player could bring back substantial enough numbers to justify their wishes. Being one of the top music labels, Def Jam had a plethora of other artists they could focus on that could move the numbers, leaving player on the shelf for the foreseeable future. That future together would soon dissolve, leaving the group's all-important sophomore and junior albums out to dry. Stunt number two, the members going solo. The thing about music groups or any group situation for that matter is there's always an escape plan for each artist, unspoken of but absolutely thought of if all else fails. After two albums not receiving the green light, a joint decision was made within the group to go forth and try solo endeavors, hoping to return at some point when one or the other built enough steam to bring back to the table. Smokey, a producer and piano player who was really like the face of the group, released Sitting on a Gold Mine in 2006 along with Personal Pain and Pleasure the same year, then in 2009 Truth in the Booth that all were enjoyed for the most part underground and didn't take off like many expected. Digital Black would release mainly mixtapes in the years after Player disbanded. There were talks about a new group album, but of course that wouldn't happen due to circumstances beyond their control. Later on in 2018, Black and Smoke E would join the legendary R&B group Drew Hill after that group disbanded as well, opening the door for the two to land smoothly in. But once again, release date disappointments as the new look Drew Hill would not get to put out an album since adding their two new members. Stunt number three, the death of Static Major. Static Major was well known in R&B and urban music for his contributions as a songwriter, singer and producer. But his real talents were in assisting, which he found major success initially helping to pen most of Aaliyah's hits in the late 90s and early 2000s, like Rock the Boat and Try Again. He was even sampled by Drake for his Take Care song Look What You've Done, the part where Static charismatically utters the lines Baby Don't Be Nervous Cause I Got You, a standout piece of the production sample that went into Drake's now classic album. Not to mention Drake's 2018 After Dark song that peaked at 41 on the top 100 and a standout on Drake's Scorpion album. He also won a Grammy with Lil Wayne on his song Lollipop that released a few days after Static's tragic death. It happened February 25th, 2008 at the Baptist Hospital in Louisville, Kentucky due to complications of a surgical procedure. With Static alive, who knows what player the group could have made happen as far as a comeback in R&B or how individually they could have done as solo artists or partnering with Drew Hill with Static's writing and energy only evolving. Losing him pretty much solidified the group player were officially over and all those shelved albums really had no chance seeing the light. All in all, Player was a dope, raw R&B group that were low-key standouts of their generation among their peers, but it didn't relate to the fans for some reason. Maybe management or their label not promoting them correctly, or maybe it was just the ultra-competitive 90s R&B wave they found it hard to swim through. 
Whatever the case, they had major potential, but for these reasons, they were lost in the waves of time. Salute, much respect, rest in peace, Static Major, it's your boy JC's Tonic Growth Music, and I'm out.